Welcome and welcome. Today we are speaking about the subroot or these thing as it's sometimes called and what the sources say on that and it's actually coming up next week. Uh, some uh, pagans and wiccans relate this to their Eostre, I think I'm saying that right, but uh, it's not the same uh, and even the Norse pagan these subroot sources are conflicting as to when it actually was and what happened so I'm gonna speak about those right now. I have created a whole playlist on my channel about every aspect of Blut and what the sources say so check those out out if you want to know like a, a more detailed picture but in this video I'm just going over what the sources say about this thing or these abloot. So first of all the dating. As you know all the major bloots in the Norse world were dated around the full moons. You can read specifically about this in Adam of Bremen's and uh, Bede's works um, but the top modern expert on reconstructing these Norse calendars and dates is Dr. Andreas Neuberg and he says that the this thing is uh, two full moons after after Yule. Uh, so I also did a video about Yule, you can check that out. Um, so this year that brings us actually to the 28th of March, a week from today. So Eostre, um, as it's called, is celebrated by the Wiccans and Pagans on the Spring Equinox, which is actually uh, today. Uh, so they're not the same day as you can see, uh, Norse Bluts are always uh, based around the full moon, so just keep that in mind. It will be the 28th of March uh, this week. Um, so next, let's look at uh, the name, uh, Disa Blut or Dis Thing. So Disa Blut, translated, it's uh, sacrifice to the Disir, or female spirits, uh, goddesses, Valkyries, Norns, nature spirits, any feminine spirits really can be called Disir. Um, the other name for it is Dis Ting, which of course means uh, the thing of the Dis here, so like a, the assembly of the female spirits. So, so we only have records of this particular uh, time of year being called Dis Ting. Uh, we don't have any sources of it called uh, Dis Ablut. Um, so this is actually still called Dis Ting still in Sweden. It's a market that is still held around this time at uh, Uppsala. And uh, this is dated all the way back to pagan times. It's continued all the way since then. So the main question that is debated by people is was there actually a sacrifice here on this day and was it actually a sacrifice to the Disir, the female spirits? Uh, so the reason people wonder about this is because a couple of sources say otherwise. Uh, in Icelandic sources especially they seem to put Disa Blut at the start of winter um, in, in the Viga Glum saga. Um, the sacrifice was to the female spirits there, the Dísir, and it would have been part of the winter night celebrations on the start of winter, which would be uh, October time. So uh, also in Heimskingla, Snorri lists that there were only three uh, main bloods per year, one at the start of winter, uh, one at Yule, and one at the start of summertime. Um, so uh, the, the fourth blood here um, near the equinox is never mentioned in this source. On the other hand, Adam of Bremen in his work does mention that a famous sacrifice at Uppsala happened right around the spring equinox, which I will go over in a minute. So this seems to be what we're speaking about right around here. Um, also in the Olav Saga Helga, this thing was also here too in Goa month. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, mid-February to mid-March on, on a calendar, but this year the moons are a bit later, um, so, it, uh, so it lines up uh, this year actually being on the 28th of March. Uh, so, my conclusion, uh, yes, I think there was a blut here at this full moon. Uh, but only in Sweden, I think. It really does seem from all the sources that Norway and Iceland uh, especially had um, the traditional bloats at different times of year, which I have gone over in other videos, but in Sweden, they like to focus more on this one main big bloat, and they made a big festival out of it where the whole country would attend and it would be held at Uppsala. That was probably the way it happened in Sweden. Uh, the rest of Scandinavia, they kind of had all the smaller bloats in their home villages at multiple times of year at the right times, but Sweden, it really does seem like they met up for a big festival and tried to do them all at once. <laughs> you know, Swedes like to fucking party, <laughs> just like they do today. Day. They are for sure the hardest partiers out of all the Scandinavians. Trust me, I know. I worked on the Scandinavian bar street in Greece when I was younger. I was drunk every day for a whole summer. Um, and yeah, Swedes are always the biggest partiers. Anyway, 
on to what the sources say about how to practice this brut. Uh, so the main one is of course Adam of Bremen's account, the famous description here. Um, lots of stuff, um, and, and, and here it, it sounds like it could be every nine years actually. And it describes the temple, uh, what god you would sacrifice to depending on what was going on, war, famine, disease, um, uh, sacrifices of nine animals of each species. Also, uh, writes that songs were sung so evil that it should not be spoken about, which, <laughs> you know, I really want to know what those songs are, but I'm sure they are lost. <laughs> then we, another source, we have Heimskringla in Sweden. Um, it, it, uh, it was the old custom, as long as heathenism prevailed, that the chief blut took place in Goa month. Uh, so that's that's what it is here around this time that's what the uh, experts um, and dr neubag dates it to uh, this description is not super detailed about what actually went on here but again it says that this brut was done for a few different reasons and it was a big market and a big festival so uh, that's what it seems in sweden um, this is the Disa Blut was probably practiced here along with a lot of other Bluts. Disa Blut is just a sacrifice to the female spirits, but there are many other Bluts. Um, in other places in Scandinavia, the Bluts were probably, you know, practiced at different times to the different deities and spirits and things like that. But uh, in Sweden, it really does seem like they, uh, they tried to assemble all of it into one big festival and do it all at once. Um, so that's, uh, that's the descriptions. Uh, these are a bit different from how I practice uh, these abluts. Uh, as you notice, no mention of the Dicid are made in either of the texts that I went over, but of course I'm sure the female spirits also played a big role here. Um, uh, but that's it for the sources. This full moon is coming up next Sunday and I'll be filming a video about how I practice this, trying to get it as historically accurate as possible, so sometime uh, a week or two from now I will release that video but hope you enjoyed this one and um, yeah uh, you guys can uh, see what the sources say here and uh, go out and practice it your own uh, your own uh, historically accurate way so that's all I'll say for today we see us next time